The Reduce, Reuse, Recycle Rice Initiative for Climate Smart Agriculture is a project implemented in Kenya and Uganda with the aim of promoting sustainable rice production practices. In Uganda, the project is being implemented in Eastern Uganda as a pilot through Kilimo Trust with funding from IKEA Foundation of the Netherlands. The objective of the project is for stakeholders in the value chain to understand whether the initiatives are sustainable and commercially viable and also to promote sustainable rice production systems. Anthony Mugambi is the R4ICSA project leader. Uh, this project is aimed at, uh, first of all, uh, ensuring that we have, uh, ensuring that we have uh, uh, evidence of uh, empirical evidence. Basically, we are supposed to collect empirical evidence and publish it on uh, basically use and reuse and recycling of rice uh, byproducts, particularly the two byproducts of husks and rice straws. So we want to show that uh, those kind of uh, initiatives, first of all, are sustainable, they are commercially viable through empirical evidence. But also secondly, we also want to promote uh, sustainable rice promotion, uh, production systems uh, by the various rice value chain actors. Although rice is considered a high value crop, it is one of the contributors to the effects of climate change because its fields emit greenhouse gases, methane and carbon dioxide arising from anaerobic respiration. Because production is bound to increase, climate smart and regenerative agriculture practices are being introduced in the rice value chain by the project such as recycling rice husks into biochar, mainly used as fuel and organic fertilizer or as carbon sink to reduce such effects. Of course, uh, rice contributes to climate change uh, in a big way, uh, particularly with the increased uh, adoption of uh, rice uh, production. There is a lot of uh, production of uh, greenhouse gases like methane from the rice fields. And one of the ways to promote and also to ensure that we, are, we have uh, climate smart uh, production is ensuring that we, are, we reduce some of these greenhouse gases. Uh, such as methane, uh, carbon dioxide, for instance. Uh, uh, for instance, you've seen when we've been moving out to the field, you've seen a lot of uh, some of our partners now uh, using or reusing the rice husks to, to produce uh, biochar. Private sector players that embraced the production of biochar since 2019 include Bongmin Group Limited, headed by Mr. Andrew Ebong. The word biochar means charcoal, charcoal from waste. Just char is charcoal. So uh, uh, in this case, biochar of rice husk is charcoal made from rice husk. Biochar has a lot of benefits. Number one, uh, biochar, as I said, is a water retainer. It all water for a longer time. Number two, biochar enhances microbial activities. The microbial activities in the long run enhances the, the soil uh, structure. It improves the soil structure, soil aerations and so on. Biochar is a, a buffer, soil pH buffer. When it is, uh, you know, it is towards neutral. When the pH is uh, acidic, put it, it brings it towards what? Uh, toward, uh, toward alkaline, so it's a pH buffer. Number four is that biochar is a carbon sink. It's a carbon sink. It, what, what that means is that if you plant it with a coffee tree, it enhances the coffee tree to, to remove carbon from the atmosphere as much as possible and fix it into the soil. The group has so far supplied six tons of biochar to New Cafe, a coffee farmer's organization, and are still supplying to debt. The organization uses biochar to raise coffee seedlings that are given to their members. To promote enriched biochar, the team has set up demonstration gardens near their production plant so as to monitor performance of the product as well as build confidence among potential clients. Some of our clients may require enriched biochar, but uh, you know, to develop the market, people want to see, then they begin to believe. And uh, we want to jump into the scene, how the enriched biochar 
will work. And that's why we, we chose it, that uh, we first use it ourselves as a demonstration for other clients who have been taking Bayesha as it is, that actually the enriched Bayesha is much better than the one which is not plain, which is not enriched. So you take one, one unit of well decomposed farmyard manure plus one unit of biochar plus one unit of soil. Then you ensure that you mix them thoroughly. As you can see, when it is thoroughly mixed, you can utilize it in your garden. Biochar, whether enriched or not, is an important soil enhancement that promotes crop growth, as explained by Dr. Lawrence Oweri, the director, Buginyanya Zono Agricultural Research and Development Institute. So for Biochar, we have tried it, not only in rice, but even with maize. It works, and it even works better if it is, uh, let me say, enriched. Because Biochar per se, it will mainly support the biological and probably the physical activities of the soil, but not mainly the chemical. So in that matter, we can enrich it with the, the required nutrients. You will discover that, yes, Eastern Uganda is the main biggest producing region for rice, but the productivity is still low. So all these technologies we are trying to look for is to help us increase productivity. In view of his findings as a research scientist, Dr. Lawrence Oweri believes the project is on the course to meeting the intended objectives. Apart from Baicha, the project is promoting rice legume integration to enhance fertility but also reduce the use of nitrogen-based fertilizers by 20% as proven by research. Uh, in terms of uh, reducing the use of external fertilizers and particularly uh, N or nitrogen based fertilizers. We are promoting what we are calling rice uh, legume integration, where we are rotating our, our, our uh, rice crop with a leguminous crop so that they, we are able to fix at least 20% of the nitrogen requirements in the field so that we reduce on the use of uh, external nitrogen. We want to break that cycle of farmers planting rice after rice after rice after rice. Because definitely that will encourage build-up of pests, it will encourage build-up of diseases and nutrient mining from the soil. So through this project, uh, there are two or three activities. One of them is that we shall do uh, a kind of crop rotational approach, whereby we can be able to break that cycle of rice and then we, we rotate with a legume crop. Because we know that legumes, uh, they fix nitrogen in the soil in addition to other nutrients. Whereas rice comes from numerous benefits, its propagation and production is a labor-intensive venture and requires a highly skilled workforce during land preparation, planting and processing to ensure order and to realize maximum productivity. This gap was identified by Bongmin Group Limited, leading to introduction of the agricultural wedge worker model in the rice production under the R4I CSA project. Bongmin Group are through the agricultural wedge worker model, trains young men whom they recruit into their system and the way they work is that these young men are trained through a period of one to two weeks on the several practices. But the difference is that this labor that they are providing is skilled labor. And because of that, the farmers who are clients to Bongomin Group, are for whom this youth work, are able to realize good yields on their farms. What the products will begin uh, the business of labor supply is the need that we realized from uh, the farmers. Because farmers would wish to go in for rice production, uh, some of them would, go, would wish to go in uh, for rice on large scale, but what would limit them majorly was labor. Rice is a, a tedious crop, uh, more so in management. So we realized if we came up 
to supply labor to the farmers. Very many will be encouraged to grow rice. So the, train, the training that they got in a transplanting rice is the skills, one, they, they have to know how many seedlings are, are they supposed to transplant. Two, they have to know how to separate them. Three, they have to know how to transplant, to make it enter the soil. Because of that, we are going to have improved productivity of the rice crop because the agronomic practices are right. When we talk about fertilizer application, when we talk about chemical application, these are done effectively. Since they got the skill, they have really changed because someone can get in a week 250,000 a week when he has transplanted the rice. So all I did is to talk to them and I contracted them to help me with this rice planting and rice farming. Their work is extraordinary for sure because I didn't expect this in Uganda here. Yeah, I didn't totally expect it. Their work is too good. They work as if it's their own and they want to make sure that at least you get, you get what you want from the garden. The model that is being promoted for the first time in eastern Uganda is likely to increase rice production in the region. Though still in its pilot phase in Uganda, the project has been able to increase uptake of sustainable rice production practices like efficient use of water and utilization of soil nutrients. Farmers can now practice intermittent flooding of their rice fields and are also rotating the crops with leguminous crops. Effective land leveling allows the seedlings to become established more easily, reducing the amount of effort required to manage the crop and increases both grain quality and yields. Seed is a living product that must be grown, harvested and processed correctly in order to realize the yield potential of any rice variety. Good quality seed can increase yields by 5 to 20%. Using good seed leads to lower seeding rates, higher crop emergence, reduced replanting, more uniform plant stands, and more vigorous early crop growth. Vigorous growth in early stages reduces weed problems and increases crop resistance to insect pests and diseases. All of these factors contribute to higher yields and more productive rice farms. Goat seed is pure of the chosen variety, full and uniform in size, viable, more than 80% germination with good seedling vigor, and free poor in this area. And we are so proud for the good governance of the government that brought the, such investors in our country. Because now I, 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 I'm always mentioning that I'm the beneficiary of this country because I have invested in, in banking. Uh, I'm the director and the shareholder in Orange Bank. I'm investing in manufacturer. I'm already investing in logistic. I have invested in Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda. I already uh, benefited from uh, Africa and also I started from Uganda. I already benefited from Uganda. So for me, to do this farm, you know, farm almost uh, is uh, farm cost a lot of money, eh? Cost me a lot of money. But it's for me, I still think about this is what I have to do and to return uh, the, what I have I have get from from Uganda. To show our people what they can do in our areas. Actually, I have learned here very many things, and uh, one of them. But now I'm skilled. From here, you can also go and open my small, my small skill industry, and I start also managing. Actually, now my life have changed in economic and in the standards of living. For me, I just call those boys and those youths of my age that the work we are doing here, some of them they are minimizing, but it earns us a living. So. 
the advice which I gave those youths which are outside there, they should come and join us, not to be loitering around there. When I start farming rice here, I find many Uganda people here. They get more income from the, for the family supporting. And most of the people they get good and healthy rice. So, which also makes me very excited. So I think uh, growing rice it is a very good item and it is also a very good projection in my life. And I think it is also my dream now. I can, uh, if possible, I want to get more area for rice growing so that it can make my dream better and make my life better and make our friend, Uganda friend, get a better life. Like the investor we are having, Mr. Zong, he is the director of the farm, uh, Zong's Industries. At least he has tried to show the country that something can be done. We try to use uh, the uh, other ones, the technology. So we, we, we try to uh, make uh, this farming uh, suitable for uh, environment. You can see uh, the land which we are using. We are, we are converting the bush to, to the modern farm. Instead of we use wetland, we don't use wetland, we don't need wetland because now irrigation system, we need water in and the water out. If it is wetland, the water cannot go out. So that's why uh, people, they don't know. In fact, we, we, we believe that the first of all, we come to Uganda uh, and we want the Ugandan to benefit it. So that's why we never think about it. In this stage, we, we, we export, we don't export. We want to uh, provide this uh, the rice to the people of Uganda. Let them to change the food structure and they, so they can, they can live longer. Because in China, in Asia, our average of the, the age is more than 80. But in Uganda, it's something like 50, less than 60, because the food structure is different. For in, in Asia, especially in China and Japan, our main food is rice, because rice is thousands of years in China uh, history. For, for, for us, we, we, we love it. It's not only because of we get used to it, it's because of the food structure. It is better than the food which you are taking it here now. That's why for us, our, our goal is to see, to improve the, 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 uh, the output and try to provide as much as, as we can to, to grow the rice to help the Uganda for self-sustain. We are employing around 1,500 workers and these people have benefited because they have managed to get skills, they have managed to get, they are employed, they have learned skills of growing rice and we're having some of them, they are out growers. And they're benefiting from the factories. Like when they grow rice, they bring it direct to the factory and they are able to sell their rice. And the big number of people here, all work is being done by people. In that, they are getting a lot from the company. And they are benefiting a lot from it. Since most of the work is being done by them, in rain-fed and deep water ecosystems, dry seed is manually broadcast onto the soil surface and then incorporated either by plowing or by harrowing while the soil is still dry. In irrigated areas, seed is normally pre-germinated prior to broadcasting. Cultivated rice is extremely sensitive to water shortages. To ensure sufficient water, most rice farmers aim to maintain flooded conditions in their field. This is especially true for lowland rice. Good water management in lowland rice focuses on practices that conserve water while ensuring sufficient water for the crop. In rain-fed environments when optimal amounts of water may not be available for rice production, a suite of options are available to help farmers cope with different degrees and forms of water scarcity. It includes soil land preparation and pre-planting activities followed by techniques such as saturated soil culture, alternate wetting and drying, raised beds, mulching and use of aerobic rice that can cope with drier conditions. At each growth stage, 
The rice plant has specific nutrient needs. This makes nutrient management a critical aspect of rice farming. The unique properties of flooded soils make rice different from any other crop. Because of prolonged flooding in rice fields, farmers are able to conserve soil organic matter and also receive free input of nitrogen from biological sources, which means they need little or no nitrogen fertilizer to retain yields. It took me four years to, through my team, through the farm, to get this technology about uh, how to utilize the modern, modern uh, uh, machinery. And, the, and also I, I need to balance the, the employment because now when you see we still employ a lot of people because the people need the, the job. If I use the, all the machinery, so that means so many people will not get trained, they, they will not get the technology, and they will not get a job. So for me, for us, and for our team, we still think about, we have to, to give uh, the Ugandan also the skill through working here. Farmers manage weeds through water management and land preparation by hand weeding and in some cases herbicide application. Understanding the interactions among pests, natural enemies, host plants, other organisms and the environment allows farmers to determine what if any pest management may be necessary. Avoiding conditions that allow pests to adapt and thrive in a particular ecosystem helps to identify weak links in the pest's life cycle and therefore what factors can be manipulated to manage them. Retaining natural ecosystems such that predators and natural enemies of pests and diseases are kept in abundance can also help keep pest numbers down. Harvesting is the process of collecting the mature rice crop from the field. Depending on the variety, a rice crop usually reaches maturity at around 90 days after crop establishment. Harvesting activities include cutting, stacking, handling, threshing, cleaning and hulling. Good harvesting methods can help maximize grain yield and minimize grain damage and deterioration. Harvesting can be done manually or mechanically.
Manual harvesting is common across. It involves cutting the rice crop with simple hand tools like sickles and knives. Manual harvesting is very effective when a crop has lodged or fallen over, however, it is labor intensive. Manual harvesting requires 40 to 80 hours per hectare and it takes additional labor to manually collect and haul the harvested crop. Mechanical harvesting using reapers or combined harvesters is the other option, but not so common due to the availability and cost of machinery. Following cutting the rice must be thrashed to separate the grain from the stalk and cleaned. These processes can also be done by hand or machine. Drying can be done using either traditional or mechanical drying systems that have varying technological complexity and capacities for either firm or commercial level. Traditional drying systems are still practiced in many areas because of its low cost and ease of management. These include methods such as sand drying, spreading grains under the sand on mats and pavements. Mat drying, used in small to medium scale drying, where threshed grain is placed on mats, nets, or canvas. Join us every Wednesday as we showcase comprehended and well researched episodes on agriculture, on the new innovations, planting, harvesting, modern technologies, and more you would like to know in the farming field. Farm Matters, a program where all your farming needs are addressed.